Good morning po. Uh, first time ko magsalita ulit sa harapan nyo after one year. Iba ang feeling. Yes, one year na po tayong hindi nakakain together ng masarap na pandesal, malasang palaman, at matapang na kape sa church lobby. Uh, but it's okay. Ang importante ay malalakas pa din ang mga panlasa natin. And with our beloved family, we taste and see that the Lord is good. Good morning everyone. Uh, let me read uh, with you Psalm chapter 35 verses 4, 4, and 4 to 5. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. On you await all the day. Let's open this time in prayer. Dear Lord, we acknowledge that you are always in control. You orchestrate everything, put things together, allow things to happen in process, and you will complete your work. Sometimes we may think a certain decision is right, but you have a different but perfect plan. Please open and align our hearts to yours and see and set our mind to your ways and your plans. May we always refer to your truth in every moment of our lives. Thank you for the salvation through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I pray that we could gather again face to face very soon. I leave up to you the vaccination program of our government. Give us supernatural strength and wisdom in managing this evolving crisis effectively. I pray that economic recovery will bounce forward and upward and that our government will act swiftly with long-term solution in regards to food security in our country. Thank you for your word, your word which always keeps us on track. Thank you for using Pastor Eric Cortez, the Board of Deacons, ministry, te ministry teams, and your congregation in leading the church towards your direction. We ask for your Holy Spirit to fill and empower us as we gather our hearts together in worshiping your holy name in this morning's worship service up to our congregation meeting later. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, let's praise and worship our Almighty God through our songs. This day last year marks the last day we have all been together worshiping in this church. In this church sanctuary. In that time last year, most of us were uncertain how we'll worship in case government calls for a lo lockdown. And now here we are still under lockdown, not knowing when we will gather together physically to worship as one. However, one thing is certain that we hold on to. God accepts our worship wherever we are, whenever and in whatever circumstance we are in. And as the year almost passed, we remember his faithfulness, his sovereignty, his loving kindness, and mercy toward us. Perhaps this pandemic and community quarantine has made you closer in your relationship with God as you've got no choice but to seek him. Or maybe you're on the other side of the coin. You're in, in this pandemic, it made your heart numb and cold. And whatever you're feeling right now, be honest to God and let this song speak to you that there is no one else like our God that can touch our hearts. And it's only God. Mm -hmm. 
facing some struggles, worries, anxieties, perhaps struggling in your faith, you're walking on a tightrope, and I encourage you to take this time right now to acknowledge your anxieties, struggles, and pains to our God, who is our peace, who gives us peace that transcends all understanding that guards our hearts and minds to Jesus. So right now, just pray. Pray to God. Lord, we pray for those who are sick. We pray for healing, Lord God. You know, you are their healer, Lord God. We pray, Lord, for those who are having financial difficulties. Lord, we know that you are the giver of all. We pray, Lord, for those who are lost, lost in their career, lost in their life, those who are seeking for a direction, Lord God. God, be, the, be their peace, be their wisdom. Give their wisdom, Lord God. And Lord God, we pray, Lord, those who are spiritually lost, maybe spiritually dead. Lord, revive their hearts, Lord God. Show them who you are. Show them that you are their relief. Show them that you love them, Lord God. And Lord, we pray, Lord, those who are struggling in their faith, who are clinging, or maybe not clinging anymore, Lord God. We pray, Lord, for them, Lord God, to just break their hearts, Lord God. Remember that the time they have met you, Lord God, that it is wonderful to be with you, that you are our help, you are our hope, you are our peace, and we sing this song, that you are our peace. That guards my heart, my help in times of need. You are the hope. You are the hope that leads me on and brings me to my knees. For there I find you way. And there I find release. So with all my heart I worship, and unto you I sing for you alone, for you alone, deserve all glory, for you alone, deserve all.
Father, we love you. Lord, we declare praises to you this day for you are our peace, our sovereign God, our very present help in times of trouble. Our glory belongs to our King, our God. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much, Music Ministry Team, for leading us in singing songs to our God. Thank you, uh, Sister Jelly, Brother Uno, and Sister Faith. I, I thank the Lord for His provision na no, nakapag-upgrade tayo ng gitara. Ang ganda. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for your faithful giving for the Lord's kingdom, even with the realities of COVID pandemic that uh, we are going through. We remain faithful to Him. Uh, let us continue giving for the expansion of His work. I will read with you Acts chapter 20, verse 25. In all things, I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he himself said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Let's pray. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your work here on earth. Thank you for entrusting a portion with FECF. Thank you for picking up faithful people for your work through giving and directly involving themselves to empower the weak, empower your children, and teach the word of the Lord Jesus. Give us wisdom on how we use it for your glory. Thank you for the assurance that you are faithful to complete it. In Jesus' name, Amen. Reminder po, uh, after the worship service, we will have a congregational meeting. Uh, meron muna tayong communion, then congregational meeting. Dito pa din sa Zoom link to to. And now let us thank the Lord for He keeps us on track through His Word that will be delivered by our beloved Pastor Eric Cortez. Amen. Uh, good morning mga kapatid. At uh, welcome po sa ating pong, uh, online live worship dito po sa Zoom at saka sa FB Live. Again, paalala po, ah, we have a short congregational meeting, some exciting things are happening and so we would like to inform you and also uh, ask for your support. At um, mamaya din po kung sakali po yung mga naka-FB live ay uh, we need you sa congregational meeting so you know the pass, ano naman, pass code, the meeting ID and so please join us sa Zoom after nito kasi po Dahil congregational meeting yon, I will be turning off the live stream sa Facebook para po dun sa congregational meeting. Then we will have our sumustahan after that. So tayo po muna yung manalangin. Let us uh, commit our time to the Lord. Father, I thank you. I thank you, O Lord, that you have given us once again the privilege to worship together even if it's virtually. Lord, it's been a year. I remember that time when we met as a board and weighed our options regarding whether to stop the services for the meantime or just wait for the government as we have been implementing quarantine protocols at that time. Lord, you gave us wisdom and the board unanimously agreed. And then afterwards, the government has imposed the lockdown. Lord, you know that in our hearts, we were expecting that it would be for a short time. But Lord, it's been a year. 
You know how much we miss fellowshipping with one another, worshiping with one another, encouraging one another, praying for one another. But Lord, you, your ways are higher than our ways. And we ask that you would continue to help us endure as we look forward to that time that we will be able to worship together. Lord, we commit to you our time in the word. Speak to us, Lord. For your servants are listening. Give us wisdom and strength. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, Marami po sa atin, paliwala ko po, sayang yung mga nasa FB Live, hindi ko makikita agad yung, ano nyo, yung mga comments ninyo. Pero ilagay nyo na rin po sa comment section. Pero gusto kong hilingin sa mga nasa Zoom, pag if you want to say something dito sa tanong ko, just unmute your mic and say it. Okay? So okay po ba kayo? Mag-thumbs up kayo or magpakita sa emoji? Yan, okay. Now, ito tatanungin ko. Ano pong pelikula? ang paulit-ulit niyong pinanood na para bang wala kayong kasawaan. You have been watching that movie again and again. And still, you love the movie. Sino po sa inyo? Uh, sige po, anyone who could unmute your mic? Sige po. Magtatawag ba ako? Sir Avengers. Yeah, Kuya Rolly, Ending. Kuya Rolly. Okay. Ang talagang gusto ko noon yung How the West Was Won and the Sound of Music. Well, how the West Was Won. Hindi ko yata inabutan yung kuya. Pero yung Sound of Music, ilang beses ko pinanood dyan. Oh, yeah, ako din. Oh. Mga tatlong beses ko pinanood dyan. Parang oh. ni Magellan yan. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Alam ni Brother Jerry yun. Alam ni Brother Jerry yun. Thank you, Kuya Rolly. Thank you. Papa. Yan. Nakikita ko si na Sister Jerry. Uh, nag, nag, okay. nag, ano ba si na Sister Jerry? Yan, mag, sino pa gusto mag-share ng movie? Ten Ang Commandments. Pastor, ano po, Pastor Stephen? Ah, Ten Pastor Commandments. Stephen, Pastor Stephen. Uy, Ten Commandments. Ayan, naalala ko yan. Kapag Holy Week, wala ibang palabas kundi yan. Eh. Ten <laughs> Commandments. Okay, Jesus of Nazareth. No? Iba pa rin talaga kahit na panahon ng CGI, yung paggawa nila ng parting of the Red Sea. Is, is still, lalo na sa big screen, one of the best. Knowing the limitation nila sa technology at that time. Di ba? Ni-reverse lang naman nila yung shot ng tubig eh. Tapos, ang dami nila lang ginawa. Pero it's good, it's good. Ano pa? Si Ellen, yung asawa ko po, Sabrina. Sabrina. No? Yung, ano, ha, yung Harrison Ford pa yung bida. And I, I believe that she can recite a lot of lines in that movie. At saka meron pa kami sa pelikula. Pero yung iba naman, sino yung gustong uh, mag-share pa ng pelikula na paulit-ulit yung pinapanood, wala kayong kasawaan, halos kabisado na ninyo yung lyrics, ay ah, yung lyrics, yung mga dialogue, but still, you watch that movie. Sige po, yung iba naman. Yeah, sa MB, Air Force That's One. Ano? Sino yun? Pakilala kayo dahil hindi ko nakikita agad yun. Cast eh. away. Sister Donita ba yan? Si Bibi, cast away. Uy, cast away. Oo nga. Sara. Ah, Sister Sara. Di ba ano yun? Yung, yung kay Tom Hanks. Tama ba ako? Cast Apo. away. Yan. Sabi naman, oh si Brother Alex, last of the Mohicans. Ang bida ba dyan? Sino ba bida dyan? Kevin Costner? Napanood ko yan. Hindi <laughs> mo maalala yung bida. Oh, si Sister Cecil. Mahilig sa pelikula. Dalawa sila, Jess. John Carter. At saka Avatar. I remember this is one of the movies I watch 3D. 3D. Yan. Saka Air Force One. Grabe talaga. Maganda talaga Air Force One. Thank you. Thank you. No? Uh, meron pa bang hahabol? Uh, may gusto pang humabol? Anong pelikula? Sige po. Ako po, Kimberly eh. Ah, sige, si Sister, Sister ano Kim. Po? Pursuit of Happiness ni Will Oy. Smith. Oo nga, Pursuit of Happiness. Maganda yung movie na yan. Maganda ah, yung movie na yan. True story yan, Sister. True story. Kami ah, ni Ella, ganda no? Ganda ng kwento na yun eh. Naka-inspire. 
Well, bukod sa Sabrina, well, of course, marami akong favorite movies. Um, pinanood ko yung Star Wars. Uh, ginawa ko pa nung may kaibigan ako Nepali, Kumar Aryal. Uh, student pa lang siya no, ng uh, uh, IGSL. Now he's Dr. Kumar Aryal and he's one of the professors of IGSL. And uh, I made him watch Star Wars. Pero I made sure that to recreate the experience that we experience, that to truly enjoy Star Wars, you don't start sa episode 1. You start sa episode 4. The New Hope. Kasi doon naman tayo lahat nagsimula eh. New Hope. Tapos di ba? Empire Strikes Back. And The Return of the Jedi. Tapos yung sumunod ng iba. Na dalawang trilogy na. So, yun po. At saka yung isa pa na nabasa ko rin yung book ay yung title ng ay, uh, Anne of Green Gables. Anne of Green Gables. Now, one thing, hindi mo napapansin, other than you enjoy it. Napalagay ko, Kuya Rolly, you sing along kapag pinapanood mo yung Sound of Music. Sinasabayan mo. No? Hindi ko na alam, Kuya Rolly, kung kakantay mo yung I am 16, no, <laughs> 17. <laughs> Pero one thing, napansin niyo po ba, when you rewatch a movie, especially if it's really a good movie, you would notice details that you've never seen before. Not only that you relieve the experience of enjoying the movie, but somehow you will still see details after details the more you watch the movie again and again. At meron pong verse sa Bible that ito prayer ko. That as we take another look sa John 3.16 Sabi ko nga last week, ang tendency natin, familiarity breeds contempt. And somehow when we hear John 3.16, it bounces off our mind. We tend to tune out. Parang it has become so familiar that we have been desensitized, sadly desensitized to the verse. But I pray that we will, as we take another look sa John 3.16, we will once again not only remember that time that we first heard the verse, the time that it became so meaningful to us, but also that we will again appreciate the salvation that the Lord has brought to us by coming down here on earth and dying for our sins. And so, basahin po natin itong John 3.16 sa English Standard Version. Sabay-sabay po tayo kahit na nakamute ang mga mic po natin. One, two, go. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Basahin po muli natin. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. This morning, we will take another look at John 3.16 na gayon na lang ang pag-ibig ng Diyos sa sangkatauhan na ibinigay niya ang kanyang bugtong na anak upang ang sino mang sumampalataya sa kanya ay hindi mapahama kundi magkaroon ng buhay na walang hanggan. Now, I would like us to focus on actually two words only dito po sa John 3.16. Last week, we looked at how God extravagantly expressed His salvific love to us. Nakita po natin na ganun na lang ang pag-ibig ng Diyos that it compelled Him, if I may use the word, not forced, compelled, magkaiba po yun. Forced is external. Compelled is internal. That His motivation, why He did what He did, was out of His love for the world. And last week, pinag-usapan din po natin na yung world refers to the greatest number of people. 
all people, every one of us. Kasi po, again, I mentioned, with due respect, may mga theologians na sinasabi na itong world limited lang sa mga pinili ng Diyos, which I disagree. At nakita nga natin that it is His salvific love, it is not just that Christ died to show God's love, Christ died to solve our sin problem so that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Now, I would like us to focus, kasi lalo na iba sa inyo, King James. Na una natin mga Bible na iba sa atin, King James. At napansin nyo, bakit dito sa John 3.16 ng English Standard Version nakalagay only son, samantalang sa King James, only begotten son. This morning, we will look at these two words, which is actually one word in Greek. Only son. Sa King James, sabi ko nga sa inyo, His only begotten son. So, ano po ba yung begotten? Di po ba? Actually, sabi ko nga sa Greek word, and I'll show you the Greek word later, isang Greek word lang yan. So, yung begotten, bagamat it's a good word, you have to really interpret the Bible carefully or else you will end up with the wrong understanding. And this time, alam nyo, we will be going deeper and uh, just take a deep breath as we dive into the deep waters of the Word. Um, lagi ko sinasabi, I will never underestimate your capability to understand the deep things of God. Bagamat medyo, maring iba po sa atin when we talk about these details, Baka po feeling po natin ay anong relevance nito sa atin. Pero alam nyo, uh, tandaan po ninyo ito. Mahalaga po sa atin na maintindihan natin yung doctrine natin. This Tuesday, uh, I've already recorded for that yung chapel service ng Phoebias. I'll be talking about the problem of anti-intellectualism even among churches. Ano yung anti-intellectualism? Na para bang yung sinasabi natin, alam mo yung doktrina, boring yan, hindi practical yan eh. Pag-usapan na lang natin mga practical na bagay ng buhay. Tsaka mahalaga nga yung puso, hindi isip. Kapatid, if you've been attending FCCF for a long time, you know that those are the statements that I would love to correct. But number one, doctrines are practical. Because right belief must lead to right behavior. Alam ko na we, we know people who know a lot about the Bible but it did not translate to their lives. But that is not the fault of doctrine. It is not an issue of doctrine na. It's an issue of obedience. That doesn't mean that doctrine is no longer relevant or important to us. Kumbaga, yan yung ating ano eh, yan yung magtatakda what we will do for the Lord. Kasi nga, right belief, right behavior. Wrong belief, wrong behavior. Now, even if a person claims that he believes this thing, but if he does another thing, question mo if he really believes that. Malalaman talaga if you really believe in something, if you obey it. So, yun yung litmus test. But still, still, knowing why and what you believe, what you believe and why you believe is very important for us Christians. Now, isa sa favorite ko sa seminary ay church history. And alam nyo, ito mabigat. When I read literature of groups that do not believe that Jesus is equal with the Father, that Jesus is equal with God. As I read yung kanilang mga literature, as I listen to the radio program or watch them on TV time and again, they would talk about the time when the doctrine of the Trinity was formulated nung 4th nung century. But the problem is, they made it appear 
that that was the time that the Trinity was invented. But actually, they did not invent the Trinity. They just defined. Pinaniniwala na nila, but they have to, they met as a council. Sa Council of Nicaea ng 4th century to agree on how they will explain the faith. Especially our belief when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ. Plus, nagkaroon ng matinding controversy at that time na pinamunahan po nito pong si Arius, the Bishop of Alexandria. And his views about the Lord were condemned at the Council of Nicaea in AD 325. He died AD 336. Ano ba itong tinuturo ni Arius? No? Ang sabi ni Arius ganito, he thought that God the Son was at one point created by God the Father and that before that time, the Son did not exist nor did the Holy Spirit but the Father only. So ang kanyang paliwala, there was a time na ang ating Panginoon ay wala doon. Wala sa eternity. But the Father created, sabi niya, created the Son and then later on, created the Holy Spirit. Walang pinakaiba yan na sa turo ng iba na si Jesus ang ilang o si Jesus ay tao, hindi Diyos. Ang tawag sa kanyang belief ay Arianism. Arianism. At marami po na modern Arians ngayong panahon na ito. Now, so para kay Arius, thus, though the Son is a heavenly being who existed before the rest of creation. Take note, ha? Um, naniniwala siya, Jesus was from eternity but created before the rest of the creation. And then later on, He created the rest of the world. Yung isang malaking grupo dito sa atin that denies the deity of Christ, na para sa kanila si Kristo tao hindi Diyos, sa kanila naman si, si Jesus Christ nagsimula yung kanyang buhay nung pinanganak siya. Yun yung turo ng, uh, ng isa sa mga ma-influensyang religion dito sa Pilipinas. No? Now, si Arius is a heavenly being like an angel who existed before the rest of creation. Uh, he was created before the rest of creation and who is far greater than all the rest of creation, bagamat gano'n ang kanyang paniwala kay Jesus, sabi niya, yeah, He is from eternity, He is greater than all the rest of creation, yeah, He is Lord, pero sabi ni Arius, He is still not equal to the Father in all His attributes. Sabi pa rito, He may even be said to be like the Father or similar to the Father in His nature, but He cannot be said to be of the same nature as the Father. Now, before I continue, nga muna tayo malalim, alam niyo, matindi naging debate nun eh. You'll be surprised. Um, pinagtalunan nila dalawang words lang. Babagitin yung Greek word, papaliwanag ko naman. Yung una, Homo usios. Pakinggan niyo mabuti pagkaka-pronounce ko ha. Homo usios. Yung isang word na pinipilit ni Arius, homeboy usios. Yung pinaglaban ni na Athanasius, yung mga nanindigan sa katotohanan na Biblia, ang sabi nila si Kristo, homo usios. Ibig sabihin of the same nature. Same nature. Kung ano ang Diyos, kung anong ama, ganun si Jesus. Homo usios. Si Arius, ang sabi niya, homoi usios. Of a similar nature. Alam niyo, magkaiba yung same at yung similar. Tricky. Kasi, alam niyo, isang letter lang ang, ang pagkakaiba nun. Ayota, I, letter I. Homo usios, homoi usios. 
na maring sabihin nyo, pastor, pambira naman debate yan. Isang letra lang. Kapatid, kapag ikaw bibili ng gamot sa butika, hindi lang yung tamang dosage at wag kang mahihiyang magtanong sapagkat nasa Lazada yan. Di ba? Tatanong mo, hindi lang dosage, kundi alam nyo, double check mo mabuti yung generic name. Kasi tanungin nyo, sino mang pharmacist, may mga gamot na magkapareho ng tunog, konting pagkakaiba lang sa spelling, but it will spell the difference pag inom mo, whether you will be healed or not, whether your health will improve or not. And so terms are very important. Terms are not just labels. Katulad nitong issue na ito. Kumbaga, para kay Arius, he will be happy if Christ is a supernatural being similar to God in nature. Pero hindi siya papayag that Jesus is equal with the Father. Yun yung naging contention at that time. At ang isa sa mga naging debate, yung kahulugan ng salitang bigaten. If Christ were begotten by God the Father, they, the Arians, reason, it must mean that He was brought into existence by God the Father. Kasi nga naman eh, yung word na, na ginamit dito, ang isa sa word na ginamit ay doon natin ako ay salitang Genesis. Origin. Di ba, Matthew. Noong una ka nagbasa ng Bible, Matthew chapter 1, nalito ka na eh. Di ba? Sabi, Abraham, bigat, Isaac, bigat, Jacob. So, yung bigat, kasi sa atin, usual meaning ng salitang bigat or biget. In the word biget, in human experience, refers to the father's role in conceiving a child. But this morning, I will explain to you na ang ibig sabihin ng only begotten God o only begotten Son. Kapag tinignan mo, kahit nga sa ibang translation, you will notice eh, only Son. One and only Son. Kasi yung Greek word na ginamit doon, it means unique. One of a kind. Pag sinurch mo mabuti yung Greek word, kasi oo, yung... Isa, kasi dalawang word yun na pinagsama eh. Yung isang word doon, doon din natin nakuha yung salitang Genesis if I remember it right. Beginning, origin. Pero kapag ang dalawang word pinagsama mo, nag-iiba na kahulugan ng mga words na yun. Alimbawa, butter, palaman, fly, langaw. Pero pag pinagsama mo, hindi mo magagawang palaman ang paro-paro at hindi mo siya ibubugaw na parang lakaw. Kasi iba na yung meaning ng butterfly. Butter sa fly. Pag pinagsama mo, to talk about that insect, the butterfly. Ganon din yung word na ginamit dito. Now, uh, let me continue. Ang point natin sa morning na to, isa lang. The one of a kind son is the one and only Savior. The one of a kind son is the one and only Savior. Tingnan muna natin yung unang part. The one of a kind son. For God so loved the world that He gave His only son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Now, pasin muna natin salitang gave. Hindi sinabing created. Although pwede nila ipilit sabihin lang. Hindi ang ibig sabihin niyang created but you have to remember Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. For to us, a, sa, a child is born. To us, a son is given. Magkaiba po yung a child is born sa a son is given. Ang pagkatao ng Panginoon, wala, meron niyang pinagmulan. Nilikha ng Espiritu Santo sa pahimalang pagbubuntis ni Maria. A child is born. It talks about As we have talked about Isaiah 9.6 before, it talks about the humanity of Jesus. But notice, a son is given. And I believe when John wrote John 3.16, he has this verse in mind. He gave his only son. Now, 
Tingnan natin yung only son. Sa Tagalog kasi, basta atin, uh, yung mga young people natin, baka hindi nyo na alam yung bugtong na anak. No, baka kala nyo yung, yung hindi tao, hindi hayop. Yung ganun, di ba? No? Ibang bugtong yon. Yung bugtong, ginagamit din nung panahon namin noon, uh, yung mga taal sa Tagalog dyan, yung ibig sabihin ka, isa-isa. Na, sa Greek, kaya ako papakita sa inyo, para lang mat- mat- masundan nyo lang ako sa ipapaliwanag ko, sa Greek, yan yung term, monogenes. Huh? Monogenes. Now, sa King James, ginamit siya, only begotten son. Papansin nyo, sa mga translation na bago, only son ang nilalagay, o one and only son. Now, tingnan natin paano ginamit ng King James yung word na yan. Sa Luke 7.12, King James Version, sabi rito, Now when he come nigh, when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. Now, kapansin-pansin na sa King James, sinali siyang only son. Ang ginamit na Greek word, monogenes. It gives us the sense na ang ibig sabihin ng salitang ito, nag-iisang anak. Nag-iisang anak. Another verse. Nasabi dito, And behold, a man of the company cried out saying, Master, I beseech thee. Malalim-lalim yung English niya na. I beseech thee. Look upon my son, for he is mine only. He is mine only. Only child. Mine, only child. At pag tinignan nyo sa Greek, it's monogenes. It's the same Greek word. Now, the last verse I'm going to point out is a very interesting verse. Hebrews 11.17, talking about Abraham, offering his son Isaac before God. At ginamit doon, ang pagkakasali ng King James, only begotten son. Sabi rito, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, opened, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. At ang ginamit, obviously, na Greek word, monogenes. But you have to remember this. Nandun yung sense ng unique. Bakit? Naging isa bang anak ni Abraham si Isaac? Di ba, ang una niyang anak, si Ishmael. Pagkatapos, naging anak niya, si Isaac. Magkaiba man ang ina, but as far as Abraham is concerned, kung titingnan natin the usual way, si, I, si Ishmael ang panganay. At itong si Isaac ang pangalawa. And yet, sa verse na to, in fact, pag tininin niyo sa ibang translation, his only son. Unique si Isaac because unlike Ishmael, he is the son of promise. Kaya pag sinabing monogenes, it carries with it yung idea ng unique, yung one of a kind. Sabi nga sa Net Bible, Isaac was not Abraham's only son but was one of a kind because he was the child of the promise. Thus, the word monogenes means one of a kind and is reserved for Jesus in the Johannine literature of the New Testament. Ibig sabihin ng Johannine, si John, sumulat siya ng, uh, ng limang aklat sa Bible eh. John, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Revelation. Ang tawag doon sa cluster na yon, sa group of books na yon, Johannine, written by John. Kay John, the way he used the word monogenes, he was using it in the sense of unique, one, and only. Yun ang ibig niya sabihin. So nung sinabing, for God so loved the world, that He gave His only Son, ang idea na gustong ipakita ni John dito, Jesus is one of a kind. Kasi, tandaan natin ito. While all Christians are children of God, Jesus is God's Son, in a unique, one of a kind sense. In a unique, 
one of a kind sense. So there's nothing wrong if you use the word bigaten as long as you understand what bigaten means. Kasi bigaten ang term na to. Matindi yung term na to. Ibig sabihin nito, unique, one of a kind. Now, sabi ng Bible, ang sino man tumanggap sa Panginoon, he who received him, he who accepts him, is given the authority to become a child of God. Pero yung pagiging anak natin or being the children of God is by adoption. We were only given the privilege, the authority to become the children of God. But Jesus is God's Son in a unique, one-of-a-kind sense. He's not just a perfect being na pinili ng Diyos. He was not adopted by the Father unlike us. But He was, kumbaga, if I may use the word, Siya yung talagang anak. Tayo po, adapted. So, dapat makita natin niya, unique yun. In fact, pag binalikan natin, sabi nga, the early church felt so strongly the force of many other texts showing that Christ was fully and completely God that it concluded that whatever only begotten meant, it did not mean created. Whatever only begotten meant, it did not mean created. Actually, doon sa creed, sa tinatawag na Nicaean creed, ito ang sinabi. We believe in one Lord Jesus, the Son of God, begotten of the Father, the only begotten, that is, of the essence, nature of the Father, God of God, Light of, of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made. Begotten, not made. Being of one substance with the Father. Begotten, not made. Why? Because Jesus is the unique, one of a kind, Son of God. He is equal. With the Father. Now, let's go to Colossians. Just as a supporting verse. Colossians 1.15. Kasi yung iba sabi nila, eh kung gano'n na pagkakaintindi mo ng bigatin, eh nung sabi sa Colossians 1, tinan nyo to. Sabi dito, He is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn of all creation. Una, sabi nila, image. Ang ibig sabihin ng image, pag tininan mo sa Greek, dyan kinuha yung salitang icon. Christ is the perfect, visible representation and manifestation of that invisible God. Meaning, kung ano ang Diyos, ganun si Jesus. What God was, the Word was. Kapantay siya ng, kamantay, kapantay siya ng Ama. Now, ang issue dito, firstborn, kasi sabi lang, kung ganun pagkakaintindi mo sa bigatin, eh bakit sinaw si Kristo? Firstborn. But you have to double check what it means. Kasi example, hindi mo firstborn lang na first in rank, uh, order. Like ako, pangalawa ko, hindi ako firstborn. I'm the firstborn son, but in our family, I'm firstborn yung ate ko, pangalawa ko. Pero may gamit ang Bible sa firstborn, if you look at the context, he was not talking about first in order. First in sequence. Example ito. <coughs> Sabi ng Panginoon kay Moses, You shall say to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, Israel is my, Israel is my firstborn son. But at that time, you have to remember this, Israel was not the first nation. Remember that the family went to Egypt and Egypt at that time was a nation. Already a nation before the, the family became a nation. And so, bakit nilang siyang firstborn? Sabi nga, in the Old Testament, a firstborn child had not only priority of birth, but also the dignity and superiority 
that went with it. Firstborn, pag in mo kay Christ, denotes two things of Christ. He preceded the whole creation in the sense na before everything was created, siya na. Sa pasimula, naroon na ang salita. Sa pasimula, nandun na siya. Hindi yung sa pasimula, nagsimula siya. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He preceded the whole creation. At higit sa lahat, ang ibig sabihin ng firstborn, He is sovereign over all creation. Yun ibig sabihin ng firstborn. Ganun katindi yung pagiging bigaten son, only bigaten son ni Jesus. He is the unique, one of a kind son. He is sovereign over every one of us. Sovereign. In other words, He is Lord. And this one of a kind son is the one and only Savior. Actually, ang original na iniisip ko na point na gagamitin ko, the unique Son of God is the exclusive Savior. The unique Son of God, the one of a kind Son, is the one and only Savior, the exclusive Savior. Wala nang iba pa. Sabi nga kasi sa Acts chapter 4, verse 11 to 12, This Jesus, sabi ni Peter, is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Pasinin natin verse 12. Sabay-sabay muli po natin basahin. Kahit na nakamute yung mic nyo, read it aloud in your homes. Let's read this together. Yung And there is salvation. One, two, go. And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Wala nang ibang pangalang binigay sa silong ng langit na sukat ikaligtas ng tao malibang ang pangalan ng Panginoong Jesus lamang because he is the one of a kind Son of God. He is the one and only Savior. Siya po, wala nang iba. His uniqueness has set Him apart from others who might be claiming that they are saviors. But Jesus is the only one who has the right to declare, unless you believe in Him, you will not be saved. That for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him. Wala nakalagay dyan, whoever believes in Him and the rest of the others. Kundi whoever believes in Him and Him alone. Whoever believes in the one of a kind Son, the one and only Savior, whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Yes, He is the exclusive Savior. Sabi niya, I am the way, the truth, the life, the. Hindi niya sinabing I am a way. There's another way pag a way. But sabi niya, the way. Wala nang ibang daan. Kapag iba dinaanan mo, ligaw ka na. Because He is the way. He is the truth. Walang kanya-kanyang version ng katotohanan. He is the truth and Unless you hold on to Jesus Christ, what you have is a lie. Malibang si Jesus ang pangawakan mo, anumang pinangawakan mo, pinaniniwalaan mo, kasinungalingan. And He is the lie. Malibang si Jesus ang iyong Panginoon at Tagapagligtas. You're not really living. Because the, the only life that we can really enjoy and experience comes from the Lord Jesus Christ, the life, the source of life. Kaya tandaan po natin mga kapatid, the one of a kind son is the one and only Savior. 
And I pray that as we read John 3.16, just as we enjoy our favorite movies, even if we have watched it again and again. Buti nga ngayon, naka-computer na file na eh. Dati, ay, nabutan pa nila, BHS, Betamax, CD, scratch na yung CD, tomat, ano kumaga, yung BHS mo, na, na, mapurol na yung tape. Pero tinatagaan mo pa rin panoorin. Kasi gusto mo sa may pelikula, and lagi kami natututunan, lagi kami nakikita bago when you watch that movie. Lalo mo siyang na-enjoy, lalo nagiging precious sa iyo yung movie na yan. In fact, if you're like me, I'm looking forward na pag nasa tamang isip na apo ko, ipapanood ko sa kanya yung mga paborito namin pelikula. It is like passing a legacy to him. In the same way, may higit pa ba sa John 3.16? Huwag natin itong kasawaan mga kapatid. Let's not allow our familiarity of this verse to breed contempt. But I pray that as we read the verse, our love for the Lord is rekindled, our appreciation of the salvation that we receive from Him grows much, much deeper, and our boldness to share the gospel becomes even stronger sapagkat lalo nating naintindihan, lalo nating napapahalagan, the more we value John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him, the one of a kind Son, the one and only Savior, whoever believes in Him, should not perish, but have eternal life. Let us pray before we break bread together. Panginoon, marami pong salamat As I've said last week, your word, so simple. It's like shallow water where a child can wade. Yet your word is so profound, so deep that a diver cannot reach the bottom of the sea. Tampanalayan ko po, Panginoon, the more that we grow not only in understanding and appreciation of your word, but the more that we are drawn intimately to you, the more if we have been, if you have already accepted the Lord, accepted the Lord, I pray that the more that you will be grateful for the salvation that you received when you believed in the Lord the more that we will have the burden to share the gospel to those who still need to hear it as we challenge them to accept the Lord Jesus, the unique Son, the one-of-a-kind Son, as His exclusive Savior, the one and only Savior. Indeed, Walang pangalang binigay sa silong ng langit na sukat ikaligtas ng tao, kundi ang pangalan lamang po ninyo, Panginoon. May we never grow tired of proclaiming your gospel. May we never grow tired of, of introducing you to people. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Habang tayo po ay nasa diwa ng panalangin, tayo po ay, we will be now having our breaking of the bread. This will be uh, the twelfth time uh, that we'll be breaking the, uh, the bread apart from each other. But I thank God, I thank God 
that um, we are one in the Spirit and we could still be joined together even if we may be absent from one another but we are present in the Lord. Again, let me remind only those who have accepted the Lord should partake of this. If you have not yet accepted the Lord, please accept Him first as your Lord and Savior before you partake. Uh, also, since nasa bahay po tayo, uh, kung yung anak po ninyo ay wala pa po sa tamang gulang, may I ask that uh, you just let them watch so that hindi po dumating sa point na hindi nila na-appreciate bakit natin ginagawa itong breaking of the bread. Let us prepare our hearts as we break bread together. Take the bread of life Broken for all my sin Your body crucified To make me whole again If I will continue, the night he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat the symbol of the Lord's body. Ako lang magpapatugtog ng video.
this innocent for your new covenant hallelujah I live my life in remembrance hallelujah your promise of Salvation's road with fear and trembling. Your way born as my own, as Christ is formed in me. Sing hallelujah. After the supper, he took the cup and said, This is the blood of the new covenant. Take and drink. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us drink the symbol of the Lord's blood. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for once again affirming us that we are one body before you, reminding us that we have been bought by your death on the cross and that you rose again from the dead on the third day to prove that the Father has accepted your sacrifice. Like the Apostle Paul, I pray that we'll always be ready to share the gospel, that we will never be ashamed of the simplicity of the gospel, that we will boldly declare, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And I pray that that life that we received from you. Not only the assurance of eternal salvation, of being with you forever in heaven, but Lord, the life that you have given us now that we have accepted you. The new life, that now that we are new creation, may our lives display the power of the gospel. We continue, Lord, to pray that you heal our land Lift us up from this pandemic. Ibangon nyo na kami, Panginoon, mula sa krisis na ito. We pray for the government. We pray that you would guide their steps na ang kapakanan po ng nakararami ang isipin nila. Ang tanging maisip nila yung common good. Huwag nyo na pong hayaan, Panginoon, na may mga tao pa na, na manggugulo pa at sarili ang iisipin. Kundi ang panalangin namin, your righteousness will exalt our nation. And once again, Lord, we will see your goodness. And we look forward to that time that we will be worshiping face to face together again. Partaking of the bread 
not virtually, but here in our sanctuary. Thank you, Lord. Continue to protect our families. Continue to provide our needs. We thank you. We glorify you. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. Mga kapatid, we'll be singing our last song, but please, uh, after nung ating final song, I would like to ask you na stay po kayo sa Zoom because we will have our, uh, our uh, immediately our congregational meeting sa mga kasama po natin sa Facebook Live na i-PM ko na po sa inyo sa chat yung pong code, yung link para po maka-join kayo sa Zoom para makasama po kayo sa ating pong congregational meeting and after that, yung ating pong sumustahan. Okay? So, again, yung po yung ating paalala at mga kapatid, let us now sing our closing song. Amen. 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 Palapakan po natin ng Panginoon. Okay. Uh, i sa mga nasa FB Live, uh, thank you po for joining us. We will now be stopping the live stream. Please join us sa Zoom para po sa ating pong congregational meeting. Okay. Dali po ah. Uh, ah. Ano muna tayo? Alisin ko muna yung aking spotlight. Yeah, papatayin ko na rin po yung recording.